you know, my take on Trump, and I know him a little bit, is he gets up on the debate stage and he, stage, he gets so agitated that he ends up kind of steamrolling over his own points. Yes. You know what I mean? Like when you're going to debate Joe Biden, you are fishermen with a marlin on the line. Just let out as much line as you want. He will tire himself out and you can gaff him on board. Do not do not keep fighting with him. He'll he will collapse his own arguments if you just let him answer your questions. It's it's such an insight. I think because you're a performer, you see that really quickly. I think it's a very insightful observation about Trump. The more anxious he becomes, the less articulate he is. And so if you want to have an interesting conversation with Trump, and I do, I mean, I don't interview Trump. You know, I talk to him regularly, but I don't, I don't interview him very often. But when I do, I want to get, I want to have the most interesting possible conversation. I want to hear the most about what he thinks. And and I, why wouldn't I? I mean, that's kind of my job. And then other people can decide what they think of it. But making sure that the, the environment is calm, that the conversation is calm, is the key to getting Trump to reveal who he is and to speak in a fluent way that you can understand. The opposite of that, it really, I don't think anyone read it, but if you're ever interested in seeing Trump at his most anxious and the results of it, go take a look at the transcript of the interview he did in 2015 or 16 with the New York Times editorial board. And he, you know, he's from New York. He cares about the New York Times. They were mean to him. They were piling on, you know, 10 against one. And Trump went so dada on them. He went so like verbal Jackson Pollock, just spewing paint everywhere that it's like it it's unbelievable the result you like, you couldn't understand a single thing he said it was all stream of consciousness hallucinatory stuff and um you know i don't i don't i could elicit that you know if you yell at trump and call him a racist or whatever okay you know you'll get an answer you can't understand but i i don't want that and the other point i'd make is that distinct from like his ability as a manager was he a good president I mean, you know you could debate that but I like Trump like as a person. Like I think Trump is hilarious. I think he's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. I think he's really interesting to talk to. He's lived a life. He's 76. He's known every single person. What was Jackie Gleason like? Or he was friends with James Brown. You know, right. he'll, he'll, he'll spend 20 minutes telling you about James Brown and James Brown's various wives and his hair. And like, he's amazing. And I just like Trump. And, uh, you know, uh, politics aside, and I agree with a lot of his politics too, but as a person, and I just think it's weird when everyone's like, oh, he's so disgusting. It's like, if you had dinner with Trump, even if you didn't vote for him, even if you hated his views, you would enjoy it because he's a performer himself. He's a great performer. And um, he's a warm person, which I like. Yeah, I was just thinking of the contrast, and I'll give you a compliment because you've been very animated and forthright and done the line share of the talking in this interview, which I appreciate because that's why I'm interviewing you. But when you were interviewing Trump, you asked smart questions and then sat back. You didn't, oh, yeah. you didn't make it the Tucker Carlson show. And I think that shows a high well, degree I of skill. Enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've had my share of talking. I don't need any more. <laughs>